Greetings and salutations, friends. Today we are building the WCS Razorcrest. This is one of the most iconic and recognizable spaceships of the modern pop culture generation. Sporting a sleek, smooth design and a luxurious Tayo interior, the Wolf Chahi Razorcrest boasts a cargo capacity of over 2,000, a mobility rating of 93, and a top speed of 130. With enough firepower to melt your enemies in seconds, robust shields, and a cold fusion generator to back it all up, you'll be the most feared bounty hunter in the entire galaxy. Bring them in cold, or bring them in dead. This impressive and intimidating vessel features the Hameji Command Bridge from Tayo Astroneering on Neon in the Voli system, the powerful Pinch 8Z reactor by Xiang, sold by Stroud Eklund also on Neon, and the Nova Galactic NG-20 landing gear sold by the ship tech at New Homestead on Titan in the Soul system. Every other part can be obtained at any one of your outposts. So without further ado, I am the Wolf, I got my coffee, this is the way. Okay friends, let's get started with our landing bay, and that is going to be the Shipbed 200 landing bay by Tayo Astroneering. We're going to flip that to the aft configuration, and then we're going to skip on over to the hab tab. If you've seen my other videos, you know I like to have sort of a basic skeleton or a basic structure off of which I can build the ship. So I'm going to place these habitats here, thusly. And now I'm going to go to my cargo tab and I'm going to choose this 10ST, <clears throat> excuse me for the voice crack, the 10ST hauler shielded cargo hold that will go right there. I have a little bit of a cold right now, so um, I might have some cracking in my voice and I'll try to edit out any sniffles or sneezes. Um, let's uh, skip on over to the structure tab. So, and uh, we will grab this Deimos belly, flip it to the aft configuration and put it here. The reason I didn't use a belly here is because it won't, it won't sit there without um, glitching so we'll just put it there and that's fine anyway because I I want to have a shielded cargo hold anyway so that that works out perfectly so next I will add another one of these and then another Deimos belly to that and then that is how the aft end of this razor crest is going to look so now I am going to fill in the rest of the ship starting with uh, adding these Deimos one by ones just to establish the maximum length here and so now I have that error that says I'm exceeding maximum length so I will delete one of those then I will come come to my cockpit tab come down here and grab the Hameji command bridge by Tayo Astroneering we'll put that bad boy right there and now we are too long again of course so we will delete one move that there we are still too long so delete that one put that there and we are good we are very good okay so I kind of like to do things this way in my build videos because I like to show you guys my process for how I come up with these designs I'm gonna come over here to the structure tab I did not mean to select that I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom to the Tayo section and uh, we are going to choose this Tayo braking engine. Uh, the, most of this interior is going to be all Tayo parts. Once we get to the wings there's going to be other parts but um, a lot of this is all Tayo astroneering stuff. So now let's copy, oop I didn't mean to delete, now let's copy all of these. There we go. And I, I'm just doing this to fill this in so I have something to work off of. So I'm just hitting copy, 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 just spamming the copy button. So that's the basic shape of the Razor Crest. And now on the starboard side, I'm going to start building out some structure. 
So I'm going to come back to my structure tab all the way back up to the top to the Deimos section and I'm going to choose this Deimos Wing A, flip it to the starboard configuration and place it right there. Next I am going to choose back down to the Stroud Eklund. I'm going to choose a Stroud Eklund mid bracer. I'm going to skip one and go right there. Copy and put that there. Then I'm going to go back up to Nova. I'm going to choose this cowling, and then I'm going to flip it so it has so it looks like this, and we're going to place it right there. And while I'm here in the Nova section, I'm going to grab a Nova wing. Flip that guy is going to go right there. Now I'm going to head down to the Tayo section and grab this Tayo mid cap, and then flip. Flip, flip, Adelphia. That guy is going to go right there, and then flip Adelphia right there. Then I will select both of these and copy and place them there, just thusly. And now I will go over to my engines tab and choose my primary engines for this build. That'll be the Supernova 2200 engine. And we will put this guy right there. Perfect. Now I want to add some more structure. So back over to the structure tab and back down. I want to have, what am I thinking? Hope Tech bumper, right? Yes. Hope Tech nose, rather. We'll flip that to the aft configuration and that guy will go there. Now back down to Stroud Eklund and we're gonna choose this Stroud Cap B, flip it to the starboard aft configuration and place it there. It's always frustrated me that you can't flip these to a 4 configuration. They even specify that it's starboard aft and port aft. Like you would think that they were planning on it being able to be flipped to the 4 configuration as well. That's why I have to use this part instead of, you know, I would have liked to have put that, you know, something that looks like there but the, the opposite. You know what I'm saying, hopefully. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying because my brain is stroking out right now, so don't mind me um, you know old people problems so <laughs> let's uh, come back here we got the wing basically formed um, I'm gonna just, uh, copy this hope tech nose flip it to the four configuration and that guy is gonna go right there and then copy it and we'll have two of those in front of the cockpit or the bridge rather next I'm going to go back up to the demo section I'm gonna choose these little wings no, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to go all the way down to the Tayo section. And I am going to choose this Tayo side cap. And we are going to flip this so that it has the weapon attachment and we'll place it right there. And then I'm going to copy. I'm going to flip it so it doesn't have the weapon attachment and place it there. And then I'm just going to start spamming the copy button to fill all of this in. Thusly. Not once, not twice, but thrice. Just like that. Let's go up here, see if we can get the camera to cooperate with us. And now that's basically how that's going to look. However, I'm going to remove these four and I'm going to go up to, to the Deimos section and I'm gonna find the Deimos bumper. And that is uh, this guy right here. And we're going to flip it to the starboard side and we're going to place that there and then copy and flip flip to the aft configuration and that will go there next i will head over to the gears tab and we will find we're going to use this landing gear i tried um everything i could to mimic the look of because you know the razor crest um, has this sort of angular thing on the side uh, from which the landing gears emerged and I really tried to do my best to emulate that. At one point I had something kind of like this going on here so that it looked like this. The problem was that the landing gears in flight they just looked way too awkward. On the landing pad it looked okay because the Razor Crest is supposed to have landing gears that stick out far. 
but in flight it just looked really stupid so ultimately at the end of the day at the end of the day it's not that funny is it um, <laughs> at the end of the day I went with these hope six landing gears um, and uh, because of their landing thrust of only two I had to use two um, on each side if they could have had a landing thrust of four they would I would have been able to get away with only one and had something looking like that, which I think would have looked better. But anyway, I digress. Uh, this is basically how this side is going to look. Actually, though, to break things up visually, create a little bit of visual interest, I'm going to come to my structural tab here, and I am going to choose this tiny little Deimos Wing E, and I'm going to put that there, and then copy and then flip it this way and it's going to go right there and that just breaks things up um, so it doesn't look all samey on on the side so samey is a word right also we have this huge gap here but i have a nice little way to fix that a nice sneaky little way we're just going to copy one of these tayo side caps look at that it goes right there without even glitching so it uh, really minimizes that gap and looks really nice and we won't tell anybody that guy is there. That'll be our little secret. So now we're going to come here to the port side. And we're going to start. We're going to delete all of these Tayo, these Deimos one by ones. And we're going to start building up our interior. So starting at the aft end of the ship, I'm going to choose this Deimos Hull A, I believe is what it's called, right? If I'm remembering correctly, if I can find it, there it is, Deimos Hull A. And that is going to live right there. Next, I'm going to go to the, the Grav Drive tab. All the way down to the bottom, I'm going to choose the J52 Gamma. And this guy is going to go right there. Next, I'm going to choose my reactor, and that is the pinch 8z reactor that i mentioned in the introduction and that guy is going to live right there from now on and now i can add some habitats so i'm going to come down here to the tayo section looking for the tayo 2 by one bottom and this is going to be an armory of course because weapons are part of our culture and we are going to put that right there and that is uh, surprisingly really cool, uh, has a really cool interior. I was pleasantly surprised when I uh, first uh, took a look inside my ship. I thought it was really cool looking. So now we got the Tayo Companionway one by one. We'll put that there. Let's go ahead and add a landing gear. And this is going to actually be this NG20. I'm gonna flip it to the wide configuration and that will go right there. And so this landing configuration is going to be consistent with what the uh, Razor Crest actually looks like. So now we have those habitats. Now I'm going to go back to my Hab tab. I'm going to find the engineering bay, and I want the Tayo engineering bay bottom. And this guy is going to settle in right there. Sorry for all the voice cracks. I just, uh, my throat is not doing so well. I'm going to go to the let's see fuel tank tab going to find the where is it the 900t helium 3 tank that guy is going to live right there now i want my other cargo bay and that is going to be this uh galleon s204 cargo hold and that guy will go there so you can see the interior is coming together nicely back over to the hab tab and back all the way to about to the uh, tayo section i'm going to find a tayo 2x1 top and this is going to be our workshop where are you friend okay very nice and then i believe i added a computer core and we will put that right there and then we're, we're going to copy that and I want a I'll take this control station that will go right there behind the bridge 
And then I'll copy again, and I want a captain's quarters. And that guy is going to live right there. And then my final habitat on the interior is going to be the Tayo Companionway, one by one top. And that guy will live right there. Now we're going to start copying everything from the starboard side over to the port side. So this is just going to be a bunch of copying, copying and pasting. Maybe I'll sort of do a little bulk copy thing here. Bring all of this over and then copy and flip. Uh, no, I mean select and flip. Select and flip. Flip and flip. 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 Philadelphia. There we go. Um, we'll put one of those right there. Uh, maybe I'll start copying some of the wing over to this side. We'll copy this side cap. We'll copy this cowling. Can't attach it to anything yet. Uh, we'll copy this. Bring it over. Now I can attach this. Um, oh no, I gotta flip it. There we go. Now, now I can attach it. Flip this wing. And actually, before I do any more copying, let me copy this because I want to have one of these here. I want to have two of these caps here to sort of give me a, a roughly uh, cylindrical shape. It's not a perfectly cylindrical shape, unfortunately. Um, I want to find a fuel tank. And this, this fuel tank isn't 100% necessary, um, but I um, wanted to recreate the look of the wing um, at this section here, so that's why I put that there. And it's too bad that um, we don't have any really good parts that can create a nice cylindrical looking structure here. But um, what I did, the best thing that I could find, I mean, you can come down here to the uh, Tayo section and you can choose this Tayo nose cap or this braking engine. And that, you know, fits seamlessly with these... Uh, parts here, but it's not really cylindrical. The The other structure, and the one that I finally went with, isn't really cylindrical either, but I felt like it looked a little bit better, for my purposes anyway, and that was the Deimos braking engine. So I put two of them there just like that. Um, so anyway, I digress. Let's keep continuing... Let's keep continuing. Um, <laughs> let's continue to uh, add and flip and copy parts over to the uh, port side. That is not what I want that to look like. There we go. Select and select and copy. Beautiful. Select, select and copy. Excellent. And we'll come over here to the aft perspective and we'll choose that nose. And then we'll choose the cap and I put that in the wrong place. There we go. Just like that. And then we'll copy the engine. And then we will copy and flip the wing. And so far so good. This is really coming together nicely. Um, I am going to uh, copy that and then flip and um, bring this over. I can get the camera to cooperate with me. Let me come back to zero. There we go. That's a little easier. Um, so copy this and then flip it and place it there. And now I can just spam copy all of these side caps just like this. So copy, copy, copy. Making copies. <laughs> if you get that reference, then you are my people and I love you. Um, there we go. Is that, does that look right? I think that looks great. Okay. <clears throat> now let's, excuse me, sorry for the voice crack. I'm going to take a sip of coffee here. Oh my God, that's so good. My Keurig tragically died this morning. And... You know, I just, I couldn't have that. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to function today if I don't get some coffee in me. So, I, uh, <laughs> I went on DoorDash and, uh, to Dunkin' and, uh, ordered one of their big, uh, coffee boxes. And, uh, <laughs> they dropped it off with 
like a ton of cups and sugars and uh, creamers and uh, just this big bag of junk and junk and I'm just like I did not need all that but you know what as long as I got my coffee life is good man life is good so you can see I'm adding these uh, these uh, Hope Tech caps here um, and thusly and then I added this Deimos hull here and now I'm going to add the shield generator so I thought it would be a good idea to do well I had a couple of options so if you come down here the usual generator that I use is the sextant or the assurance SG1800 by sextant shield systems you can put that right there if you are going full Mando and you want to role play that you don't trust droids, then you can um, use this shield generator. However, the um, actual Razor Crest comes with the comes equipped with the uh, capacity to uh, have an astromech droid. So you can use, if you wish, you can use this Vanguard Bulwark Shield Generator. Now you will, <clears throat> excuse me, you will have to. Uh, progress the Vanguard quest line a little bit. You don't have to go too far into it, but a little bit, just enough to get the Vanguard parts unlocked, and then you can get this shield. And you can kind of emulate the look of an astromech droid sticking up out of there. And I like this look. I also like this shield generator, even though it's um, a Class B generator and it only has 1450 health. It does have a max power of 12, just like the Assurance, and it has a regen rate of 6% instead of the 5% of the Assurance. So I, I feel like it's a very, very nice option to have. And um, it, it makes the uh, Razor Crest look really, really nice in my opinion. So now I digress. Let's go to our Weapons tab. And of course you can choose any weapons you like. Um, I did spend some time trying to figure out if I could find a way to get some weapons sticking way out the front here. Um, but there wasn't really anything that I could attach them to that didn't completely break the design of the Razor Crest. So um, I just sort of put a couple missile launchers there like that. And then the Razor Crest actually has a gun here on the back. So I'm going to go over to my structure tab because I forgot to add this. And I want this Deimos Spine, the Deimos Spine C. That guy is gonna live right there. And then I'm gonna add this weapon. And that is the, that's my Gauss gun, where is it? It's come all the way down to the bottom, back up, find my Gauss gun, there it is. So that guy is gonna live there, just like that. And now we're going to add some lasers, and there wasn't really a good spot to put these uh, that I could find when comparing this design to you know some of the images I was able to find online. So I just decided to tuck these lasers up under the wings like this. I feel like it looks alright, it doesn't break up the design all that much. And then there you go, you have that right there just like that. Now I do need to go to my equipment tab and get my scan jammer and uh, that can go in a number of places. I'm just going to put that there for now. Actually, no, I'm not going to put that there. I am going to put it there for now. And so let's choose now. Ship it. Oh yeah, ship is missing a docker. I'm going to grab this uh, 100 DP slim docker by Deimos. We'll flip it so, and then just attach it underneath here. I'm not sure why it did all that twitching there, but we'll put it right underneath, attach it to that companion way there. And now we can come back up here and we will assign our weapons. So let's assign the laser then the Gauss gun and then the missile launcher. Yep, just like that. Now we are nominal, but you can see we only have 48 mobility. 
and I mentioned in the introdu introduction that we had 93 mobility. Now, I um, really tried to do this ship glitch only. Um, not that I am against glitching. Glitching is just fine. Um, I've done it in a few of my builds. Um, but uh, I was, you know, I like to make my builds accessible to everybody. So maybe some people don't want to glitch. And so they have that option. So um, I tried a number of different engine configurations. I just, n nothing I could come up with didn't break the design of the ship or the look of the ship. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to hide a powerful engine inside the ship. So I grabbed this Poseidon DT-230 engine from Stroud Eklund on Neon in the Voli system. And how we're going to glitch this is we're going to take it, bring it over here. You can see what I did is I, I removed that one by one companion way and moved the captain's quarters forward. Uh, because I don't want this glitching into the interior of any of my um, habitats. So um, we're going to bring this engine over here. It's going to settle. It's going to snap into place, but it's going to be red, indicating we can't leave it there. But what we can do is we can press the Y button once and then once again. So flip and then flip and then cancel and then that will stay right there just like that and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these two guys here reselect all of these and then bring all of this back over just like this now you could leave this like this um, but if you want to hide this engine a little bit better and I do you can do a little bit more glitching. So we're gonna take this shield generator and just move it over for uh, temporarily. We are going to hover over this Deimos hull and then copy it and put it right there. We're gonna copy it again and put it right there over the engine. And we're gonna hover and then copy again. And that is going to glitch into place right there. So if you see, if I, um. If I just take one of these hulls and try to put it there, it'll be red. But if I if I do the uh, drop glitch here, then it will stay there. And excuse me one moment. Okay, um, I discovered by accident actually that if you hover over this one and then copy, it'll actually snap another one down into there, and that almost. In completely hides that engine so you will get a little bit of glowing around here but you know at the end of the day it's not that bad at the end of the day it's not that funny is it um, so next uh, what I'm going to do is add a couple more bits of structure um, I want to grab this Deimos cowling and put that there to create a, a uh, slope down this end into the tail and then I am going to copy it flip it to the four configuration I'm going to attach it to this hull here and then hover over copy and then confirm and then remove both of those and there we go that is the final look of the uh, top of this ship now, um, there are a couple more structural pieces that I need to add. You know, the icing on the cake here, the piece de resistance, and it's going to be these little skegs. Before this game existed, I didn't even know skeg was a word, but there we go. We got some all-important skegs that we're going to add here, and we will bring those over here, and here we go. So far, so good. You can see my credit balance is not zero, so there's still something I haven't added. So I'm going to search through my tabs and see what it is that I'm... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did I add the lasers? I did. Um, I'm going to exit. I'm going to uh, try to figure out what it is I'm missing, and then I will splice that out, and I'll be back to you in a moment. Okay, friends, I figured out what it was I was missing. There always seems to be something at the end of my builds. It always um, seems like um, there's something left over that I'm forgetting to add. So 
Um, it was, uh, I forgot to add these two um, Tayo side caps here on this wing. I also forgot to add the fuel tank. But now you can see um, my credit balance is zero, so I know that I've, um, this ship is true to my original design. And there's one other thing I'm going to do uh, because lately I just, I've really found myself being frustrated with the scan jammer. So, um, it, because you can't color it and it just always seems like it sticks out like a sore thumb. And it seems to me like they should be hidden, right? You wouldn't want anybody to see that you have a scan jammer. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it right here. And this is going to be my last glitch of this build. And uh, we're just going to take this Tayo side cap and put it there and then flip, flip and cancel. And there we go. And that kind of hides that. Uh, scan jammer there and that looks really nice this is truly the best W the best uh, razor crest that you can get sorry for the uh, little sh strokey brain there all right so let's cancel out of this and take a look at the color sliders okay friends here we are in the color menu and we are gonna start with the gray color that I used on most of the ship and to get that color, I placed the hue and saturation sliders all the way to the left. And I put the brightness slider halfway between the fourth and fifth color squares down here at the bottom. And then to get this orange striping, I placed the hue slider about five or six clicks over from the left. I put the saturation all the way to the right. And then the brightness is between the ninth and tenth color squares down here at the bottom. Now I did do some accents on a few different parts of the ship. You can see some dark gray accents there. And that's just the default charcoal gray color that you get when you first open the color menu. And that's it. That's all we need for colors on this ship. So let's exit out of this and let's take a tour of the interior. All right, welcome to my ship, friends. Upon entering, we land right in that armory the Tayo 2 by one armory. And we'll just uh, take a nice leisurely look around here so you can get a sense of the interior. You can see we have a brig, which I was pleasantly surprised by when I first built this ship and took my first look at the interior. We have some places for our weapons. Got a little... Uh, chair and table there for doing some maybe we're cataloging our prisoners or whatever since we don't have carbonite in this universe um, we got some cool little hazardous materials oxygen flammable materials it all looks really cool love this Tayo companion way now we will uh, jump up into the, I think this is the workshop. No, this is the engineering bay. So we, I like how the Tayo engineering bay has this, uh, you know, all this, you know, com all these computer banks and monitors and stuff, controls and everything. I think that's really cool. I think the um, Tayo engineering bay really sports a nice unique design with a lot of elements that you don't see in the other engineering bays you know like the flammable and hazardous materials and then you cables and um, sawhorse and tools and a ladder and you know a storage crate you know it's all kinds of really cool some more hazardous materials there it's all really a lot of really cool immersive elements in this engineering bay so I might try to use it in a lot more of my future builds then we uh, jump up here into the workshop now I don't know if it's because this ladder is here but unfortunately this workshop does not have a research station I feel like I would have liked that um, we do have the space suit workbench the weapon workbench and the industrial workbench which is really nice but unfortunately it does look kind of empty so it might be worth it sometime to come back here and experiment with some different um, workshops see if we can get 
some more uh, a more interesting looking interior um, it also could be because the ladders are here and that's why we're not seeing as many objects uh, loading in so we come through this door into the computer core so we got lots of cool looking immersive elements in here lots of uh, computery futuristic looking doodads and tchotchkes computer banks and monitors and controls and everything so this is a really cool looking computer core I really like it just take a nice leisurely look around at everything and we'll come back through get a look at it from this perspective it's really fun please fix <laughs> I like that a little, nice little touch in there nice humorous little touch back through the workshop and then we will double jump up into our control stations and this is looking really nice I am pleasantly surprised to see it looks like some of the you know random clutter has loaded in correctly um, I know with the latest update of this game um, there's really been some glitchy stuff happening with you know more clutter loading in than actually should be here so I am pleasantly surprised to see that at least for now um, I have a normal amount of clutter so that's really really reassuring but I'm sure if I play around a little bit some more clutter is gonna load in so we got our all-important coffee station here coffee is life um, got our all-important lavatory got our door glitching into the chair uh, not sure how that works we must be using some future futuristic materials that can coexist within the same space-time coordinates um, yeah that's that's how that uh, that collection of words that I just said makes complete sense we got a nice little uh, desk here with some knickknacks and doodads and tchotchkes we got a navigation console and then we got some storage for all of our action figures which is of course extremely important and then another little table here and then we got look at this our nice cozy little bunk with all, with our little friends we love our little friends look at those guys they're so adorable the little scrunklies so yeah we got some pictures that um, not sure who drew those maybe it was Sarah maybe it was uh, Cora maybe it was us who knows so now we will uh, come back through um, this uh, and I'm trying to go slow I'm trying as best as I can to go slow because that was a bit of constructive criticism I got on one of my videos that I was going too fast through my tours so now we will come in through the cockpit um, and we'll just take a nice leisurely look around here um, there it, this uh, bridge looks kind of spare and spoiler alert I will try to blur that out but yeah this bridge looks kind of spare but I do like that it looks nice and clean I also like that it's consistent from the outside consistent with the look of the actual razor crest and on the interior it's consistent with the actual bridge because um, if you read the description if you look it up on the wiki um, it has the bridge has a spot for one pilot and then two you know other chairs for co-pilots or whatever so I thought that was uh, I thought that worked out really nicely so there you go that's the interior tour of the ship so let's exit out of this and take a look at the 360 of this ship And there you have it friends there is the WCS Razor Crest I hope you like this design as much as I do I hope you enjoyed the video found it helpful and informative 
and I look forward to seeing your own versions of this ship in the Starfield Ships subreddit, on any of the Facebook pages devoted to Starfield Shipbuilding, and anywhere else you can find images of people's awesome ship designs. Good luck, friends. Happy gaming. I have spoken. <laughs>